You shouldn't blame yourself for this, Adam. It wasn't your fault. It's not that easy, Matt. If I wouldn't have lost that stupid book, he'd still be alive. That has nothing to do with it. No one would have thought he would have gotten in a car crash or something like that. You need to move on. It's been five years now. Well, maybe five years isn't enough. Wait, man, I didn't mean it like that. It's fine. It's just been hard. My mom won't even come to see him. She's trying to deny the fact that her husband was ever killed. Look, man, I'm sorry. There's not much else I can say. Don't worry about it. It's fine. There's nothing else to say. So, what are you up today? You want to hang out? I don't know. I... I don't think so today. I'm not really in the mood. It's fine. I understand. I hated seeing my best friend like this. Ever since I moved here two years ago, he was the only one that included me. He took the step no one else would and introduced himself to me. Without him, I'd be a loner. I never knew Adam before his father died, but I've been told he was a pretty normal kid. A 4.2 student like me wouldn't have many friends if it weren't for people like Adam. He had done so much for me, taking me under his wing when I had no one else. I'm always thinking of ways I can help him. I just can't think of anything worth doing. Mastery is measured by your smile. You too can be part of the Avenger team for three small famous nights. And how much your pets are going to love it. Dogs, cats, they... I've had enough practical jokes for one evening. Good night, future boy. No, wait, Doc. Doc, the, the, the bruise. The bruise in your head. I know how that happened. You told me the whole story. You were standing on your toilet and you were hanging a clock and you fell and you hit your head on the sink. And that's when he came up with the idea for the flux capacitor, which is what makes time travel possible. And that's when it hit me. I could actually do something to make my friend's life better. All this time I've been sitting around doing nothing when I could be using my full mental capacity to do something important. I would make time travel possible. But was time travel even possible? At the time, I didn't know. Many scientists deny the fact that it was even possible, but I was still willing to try to make it a reality. And so it began. I started working on the machine whenever I had time. Eventually, it started to consume my life. I would skip school just so I could go home and work some more. Do a few more calculations, modify my old computer motherboard a little bit more, work on the program. Soon my grades dropped. Luckily my parents didn't notice. And all of this wasn't just for Adam, it was for me too. A normal routine gets boring after a while. Sometimes you need to break the rules and do something out of the ordinary. Life is too repetitive sometimes. And after only a few weeks of work, the prototype was complete. Basically all the time machine is, is a program I wrote using quantum integration of physical properties of light projection, running on an old computer which is connected to a quantum accelerator that produces a window of light, light exceeding the speed of light that creates the coils of the past. There's only one problem with the machine. It takes a large amount of electricity to run. A normal electrical socket can only keep the machine running for a full 30 minutes. After that, it overheats and shuts off, trapping me in whatever time I'm in. This means when I carry out my plan, I'll have to do it in under 30 minutes to make it back to the present in time. I will need access to a large supply of electricity for it to run longer, but for now, I'll have to make do with 30 minutes of time. After my last unsuccessful test, I did some more modifications and tried it again. And it worked. My time machine worked. After a few more successful tests, the time machine was fully operational and ready to go. I had done it. I had been the first human being to successfully time travel. Or at least, so I believed. Maybe time travel had been invented by someone. One of the best thinkers in the world, and yet it was locked away because they feared of destroying the space-time continuum. I mean, it would make sense. I was afraid too. 
Saving a man's life could alter time and space as we knew it. But it was a risk I'm willing to take. And that risk, I'll take tomorrow. A chocolate milk chick, please. You seem to like computers. No, it's just a project for school. I'll be right back with your milkshake.
Hey, Adam. Hello? Who is this? Dude, what are you talking about? Sorry, but I don't know who you are. Dude, what are you talking about? We're like best friends. Best friends? But I don't even know you. We met at Jefferson Middle School like two years ago. Jefferson Middle School? My dad would never let me go to a place like that. Hello? Here you go. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Okay. How could I have been so stupid? I should have known saving a man's life would have its consequences. I just never imagined them to be this. Once I got home, I soon learned that I was a loner. A nobody. Without Adam, there was no one who welcomed me when I moved here. And of course I was sad I no longer knew him. I had even considered going back in time and reversing all of this. But I realized the consequences. Adam will lose his father. The whole reason I made the machine was to help out my friend. And now that he's happy, I would have to move on without him, as hard as it may be. I decided to destroy the time machine. I don't want it to fall into the wrong hands, and overall I don't want myself to use it again. Not even I deserve the power to change someone's life. In every decision, someone will win and someone will lose. I just need to accept my fate and move on. Hey, are you reading that book? Uh, yeah, um, I'm almost done reading. It's pretty good so far. Yeah, it's one of my favorites. Do I know you from somewhere? Uh, no, I don't think so. Nice to meet you. I'm Adam. I'm Matt. After